All great things must come to an end. The career of Kobe Bryant ended last night, and unfortunately, it's time for the seniors here at Ohio Sports and to walk away from their game too. And in our last show, we'll be talking a little softball, a little track and field. We'll be discussing our top moments from this year, and you won't want to miss out on D-Block. Us anchors will be testing out our football skills. This is Ohio Sports Zone, and it starts right now. Welcome into our very last Ohio Sports Zone of the year. Get out the ice cream, get out the <laughs> tissues, because it is going to be a very emotional show. Alongside senior Alex Utano, I am Ben Mitchell, and we've got plenty to talk about. But let's start on the softball field where the Ohio University women's softball team, after enduring a little setback, a four-game losing streak, picked up on a four-game winning streak and took that streak into Kent State just a couple of days ago. However, they could not continue it, and they dropped the game 5-4 to four in nine innings. And it's very unusual to see this softball team in a funk as it is. They are 5-5 five and five over their last 10 games after they had that four-game losing streak. Like you said, they responded with four straight wins, but they could not get the job done here. Cooper and Hutchinson got things started early with, two, with excuse me, a total of three RBIs to put the Bobcats up 3 nothing but they quickly squandered that lead into a 4-3 hole. They were able to tie it up late, but extra innings did them in as Kent State was able to end the Bobcats run. Yeah, and at a 24-14 and 14 record so far this year, you don't expect those four-game losing streaks from this Ohio University softball team, but you saw them bounce back with a little four-game winning streak. But, like you said, they could not get the job done at Kent State a couple days ago. You just want to highlight Savannah Joe Dorsey pitched a very good game. Three and point one innings pitched, three earned, two hits, no decision for her. And then you also had Tyler Saxon and Deanna Cole, each picking up three hits for the Bobcats. Cassie Hutchinson, like you said, had a hit with two RBIs. So you saw that hitting in this game for the Bobcats, but it was not timely enough. Kent State was able to draw some walks later in the game, score some runs, and they were able to outlast the Bobcats in nine innings, a very long game for the Bobcats, but Kent State was able to prevail. And then an unusually shaky performance from Savannah Joe Dorsey led up three runs and 3.1 innings pitched. Overall this season she is 17-8 and eight with a 1.86 ERA. So there's still some bright spots. Obviously this is just a bit of a funk for this usually red hot softball team. They're gonna end up playing Akron tomorrow and hopefully for the Mac or excuse me for these Mac powerhouse teams they can get back on track. Yeah we wish them all the best this weekend. Now switching over to track and field and you got to highlight and congratulate this Ohio women's track team who picked up a team win at the all Ohio track and field championships scoring 244 points on Saturday at the Goldsberry track. It was very bad weather conditions but the Bobcats were able to pick up nine first place finishes and like I said was able to win that invitational. And you had a bunch of players who stepped up. You have Kristen Winkler finishing first in the 100 meter hurdle. You have Haley St Strongmiller finishing first as well. You have three top three finishes in the 5K highlighted by Alyssa Atkinson's winning time of 17.55.24. I mean th this is a very big performance from this Ohio track and field team and after a couple shaky performances they are finally end up to get back on track and they finally got the first place finish that they've been working for. Yeah, it's kind of like you said, they have had those shaky performances this year, but they have also been able to turn out performances like this where you get 244 points on Saturday and you look like a very dominant track team. Other results from this track and field invitational, Jordan Porter finished second in the shot put with a throw of 14.3 meters. Erica Armstead finished third in the women's triple jump. Taylor Smith finished second in the high jump. And Emma Ryan finished fourth in the women's discus. So you not only had women, Ohio women finishing first in these events, you had them placing up very high in these events as well. So a very good performance from this track and field squad this weekend. You also had Jordan Porter, excuse me, 
finishing second in the shot put. Hopefully they can continue this momentum into their next Invitational tomorrow at UNC. It is the Charlotte Invitational, and we wish them the best of luck for that. But last but not least, football had their green and white scrimmage in. Wow, did the defense ever really take the cake? They win this one, 62-18. to 18. It was highlighted by Jacob Coons, the linebacker, with six tackles, one sack, and one forced fumble. And after a couple seasons where defense has really been a shaky point, especially when they get hurt, that's nice to see that your Bobcats defense is taking strides to improving. Yeah, and it is a very good sign to see some of these young guys step in in the spring game. Obviously, Solich, Coach Solich wants to see some of these young guys play, but Jacob Coons is a redshirt sophomore. Austin Clack had five tackles. He's a redshirt freshman, so you saw a lot of young guys step up for this defense. It could be a very promising defense come the fall when Ohio needs that to step up and win some MAC games if they want to get back into the MAC championship game at the end of the year. We'll have to see how they fare next season, but definitely a promising start to their 2016-2017 season. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, John Kosas has a little bit of insight news on the baseball team. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to Ohio Sports Zone for Ben Mitchell. I'm Alex Utano. And one of our reporters, John Kosas, took a bit of an inside look at something neat that the baseball team has been doing. Check it out. Junior outfielder Mitch Longo battles against opposing pitchers in the leadoff spot for the Bobcats this year. Longo is coming off of winning Mac Player of the Year honors while starting 57 games for Ohio and hitting 357. Um, I try not to change too much uh, coming off, I mean, the successes I had last year, but I mean, I feel like the way other teams have been attacking me has been a little bit different, so it's kind of changing me to, or causing me to change rather, my approach a little bit. This season, Longo's success has continued. He is hitting 336 and scored the game-winning run off of a walk-off wild pitch versus Buffalo last weekend. Baseball isn't the only battle Longo and the Bobcats are fighting in this year, though. The Bobcats are teaming up with the Versus Cancer organization to fight against pediatric cancer. The fight against cancer is personal for Longo. I mean, any kind of foundation like this means a lot to me because personally, I mean, my mom uh, lost her battle of breast cancer when I was growing up, and uh, so it's always kind of hit home with me. And seeing kids, especially, I can't imagine. It's, we tell the guys how fortunate we are. Like, you know, we have a bad game, you strike out, whatever it may be. It could always be a lot worse. So, I mean, I try to look at things like this and, and try to give back as much as we can, so it means a lot. Longo has his mother's initials marked on his cap and tattoos on his wrist to commemorate her, and he says that she is a big reason for why he has been so successful. Yeah, I mean, I mean, before the start of every game, whether we're home or away, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to her for a little bit in the outfield, and then I'll, I, after the anthem, I'll point up to her just let make sure she's with me. I mean, I wear my necklaces and everything like that, but I mean, she was always a real big supporter of me as with uh, the rest of my family, so she's always here with me. You can help Mitch and the Bobcats team up against cancer today. Just visit vs-cancer.org backslash our-teams. Scroll down to Ohio University and click on the Attack Cat logo. After that, enter your donation amount in the field to join Ohio's fight. There are also hyperlinks to share Ohio's page via email, Facebook, and Twitter. 
Yeah, I mean, especially seeing it firsthand. I mean, seeing my mom go through what she did go through. You know, I, I, I've, I've seen it. I mean, that's my motivation every day. You know, like everything I do, I, I mean, I do for her. And I mean, growing up and, and experiencing that and having him come in and talk to us, it really humbled us and, and really kind of hit home with how fortunate we all are to, to be healthy. And so when something like this comes up, we feel like we really got to, I mean, step forward and, and kind of bring it to other people's attentions who really aren't really aware of what's going on and, and for it to be uh, brought to our attention, it kind of makes it a little bit easier because people watch our games and everything like that, so we'll kind of bring some publicity to it. Ohio's race to $5,000 ends May 10th, where they will announce their successes during their game against Marshall at Bob Wren Stadium at 6 p.m. For Ohio Sports Zone, I'm John Kosis. Welcome back into the broadcast, and we are now joined by John Kosas. And John, what a way for the baseball team to go a little bit beyond the baseball field, outside of playing the game, to do a little bit more for the community. Ben, you love seeing interaction with the community, and that's exactly what this Ohio University baseball team is doing. Once again, that fundraiser is active until May 10th with a 6 o'clock game against Marshall at Bob Run Stadium you can show up to. It's a couple weeks after the semester ends for Ohio University students, but remember, you can still get in free with your Ohio University student ID. Now, John, the baseball team may not be in the place they were last year. They may not have the ideal record, but there are some bright spots to this young season. Now, if you had to pick a way too early MVP for this baseball team, who would it be? It's tough. There are two guys I really like this year. The first one is Jake Rowan. Rowan has 15 appearances this year in relief, and he has been an absolute monster, mounting a 1.53 earned run average, a 2-2 two and two record, and the guy has more strikeouts than innings pitched. He's been a very big staple of this bullpen. The other guy that I'd have to look out for is Mitch Longo, the guy the package is about. Mitch Longo ended up having, first off, a great season last year, Mac Player of the Year honors, and then he's been able to adjust. A lot of guys have been attacking him on the inside of the plate. He's still hitting above 300. He's the leadoff hitter for this Bobcats team, and he came in as a power hitter. He's really been stretching out his talents. Now, the Ohio baseball team is not exactly where they want to be at 15 and 17 on a year, but they've got it going a little bit. A three-game winning streak after a shaky start to conference play. They got two wins against Buffalo, and then this latest win at Dayton, a 4-3 win. What have they been doing right in these last couple games to sort of right the ship? They've been hitting very well late in ball games, and the bullpen hasn't been giving up games. I think one of the biggest moves that Coach Rob Smith has had this year was moving Jerry Salisbury into the bullpen because – He's pitched twice in the bullpen. He's given up a lot of innings and zero earned runs. That's what you like seeing out of a young stud who just couldn't hack it in the starting rotation. Now he's a star in the bullpen. Reminds me a little bit of Logan Kozak. John, thank you so much for your time. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, us three are going to break down the top five moments from this school year. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to Ohio Sports. I'm Alex Utano, joined by Ben Mitchell and John Kosas. And guys, it's been an exciting school year in terms of sports. There have been some highs, there have been some lows. But now it's time to determine what are the top five moments from this school year. Ben, go ahead and start. Well, at number five, I'm not going to start with a moment exactly. I'm going to start with an athlete. 
and Cody Walters of the Ohio wrestling team had a fantastic year after a breakout junior year last season, kind of put himself on the map. This senior year, he went out with a bang. He wanted to throw the kitchen sink, as he said, at his opponents in this latest NCAA tournament. He gained All-American status for the second time, placing seventh in the 174 weight class, his highest finish at a national tournament. He finished the season with a record of 30 and six, winning a total of 115 matches for Ohio. Just an all around fantastic wrestler. And Ohio as a team finished 29th out of 72 teams. He earned all MAC honors. He won 23 matches in a row last year. He lost in the second round in the NCAA tournament a year ago. So improvement for Cody Walters, just a fantastic wrestler. And he had a fantastic season this year. Yeah, and coming in at number four, not all moments have to be great <laughs> moments to be in the top five moments. Let's talk a little bit about field goal mania. You guys know what I'm talking about. Ohio University and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Let's set it up a little bit. Shannon Brown ends up scoring a touchdown to give the Gophers a 27-24 lead with about 30 seconds left. At about that point, you think, man, okay, Ohio's pretty much done. But they drive. They set up for a 53-yard field goal. Josiah Yazdani gets iced. He kicks the field goal, as most field goal kickers do. All of a sudden, you see a lot of yellow flags on the field. Turns out that's delay of game all of a sudden. <laughs> and Ohio goes for the Hail Mary. They fail it. We know the end result. 27-24 in favor of the Golden Gophers and one thrown headset from Frank Solich. Oh, what a dark day for Ohio football, but you got to give the boys credit for fighting through that game. At number three, the Ohio basketball team needed a little bit of rejuvenation after they exited the MAC tournament or earlier than they wanted, and it started in the CBI first round, and what a game by Treg Setti. Treg Setti recording a double-double and a 94-90 nail-biting win against Albany. 30 points from Treg Setti, a man who has averaged about 11 points a game throughout the season, got 30 points, 10 rebounds. He's averaged just over five throughout the season. And what a step Treg Setti has taken from last year to this year. I even talked to him. He said he sees himself as one of the leaders and he's also leading by example with this incredible turnaround that he has had. He's really been making an impact and he made his voice known in that 94-90 win. You also have Campbell, Kaminsky, and Dardis all recording double digit points. A great victory all around and it's set up for a final four run in the CBI where unfortunately, Moorhead State got the best of the Bobcats. Yeah, and for number two, I'm gonna stay on the basketball court and talk about one of Ohio's biggest wins of the year. And they entered this game tied for second with Buffalo, a huge matchup against the Buffalo Bulls for second place in the MAC East. And Ohio got huge performances from Jaron Simmons, who put in a crucial 31 points. And how about Jordy Dardis, the freshman? He had a pair of huge threes in the corner. His first one was to tie the game at the end of regulation, 85-85. And then his second was in that same corner, was to put the Bobcats ahead for good in overtime, 96-93. to Gavin Block made five of eight free throws in the final 14 seconds to seal it. But a huge win for Ohio late on in that basketball season. A, a little momentum win against the Buffalo Bulls. And let's slow things down a little bit. Let's build up a little bit of tension and talk <laughs> about the honorable mention. We're not going to give you number one just yet. We have to talk a little bit about Savannah Joe Dorsey. You can't say enough about this pitcher for the Ohio Bobcats. Not only does she have the all-time wins record for the softball team, not only does she have the all-time strikeouts in a single day record for the Ohio Bobcats, but she is putting together a season right after leaving because of a bicep injury in her sophomore year that is absolutely incredible. Opponents are just batting 160 against Savannah Joe Dorsey, and by the way, She's striking out 42% of the batters that she faces. She has pitched 161 and two-thirds innings this year, and she has struck out 234 batters. How incredible is that? If she doesn't win MAC Player of the Year in the softball arena, if she doesn't even get maybe even an honorable mention, all-American mention, I think she has been snubbed. Now enough stalling, John. Let's get to the number one moment on this list, and that is a moment that I know we all love. Ever since that, the Miami Red Hawks knocked the Bobcats out of the AP Top 25. The Bobcats have really been getting revenge ever since, and they've really been dominant at Peden this year against, or excuse me, in the past couple years against the Red Hawks, and they continued so with a 34-3 win on homecoming for the Battle of the Bricks. 
Darius Vick with, went 21 for 33, 243 yards, a touchdown and a pick. You have Malik Irons running for 49 yards and a touchdown. Smith re had nine receptions, 91 yards and one touchdown. And even Greg Winham, who's probably going to go into this year as a starting quarterback, had a little action, four for seven and 35 yards. What a game overall for the Bobcats. Yeah, I think anyone in Athens can enjoy a nice <laughs> beatdown of the rival Miami Redhawks. We will take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll be trying out our football skills. You're not going to want to go anywhere. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Okay, the seniors thought we were doing a game today, but we are actually doing a secret package that I had prepared. Let's play it. Contrary to popular belief, I am not a senior. I, this is just my last year at Ohio Sports Zone, and honestly, this year, thanks to my crew, it's been one of the best ones ever, and I couldn't have asked for more, especially from these seniors that are leaving us. Uh, it's been an absolute privilege to work with all of them every Thursday. They're all great people and great friends that I've come to know throughout the past two years here with Ohio Sports Zone. I'm really blessed to work with all of them. They're all fun on and off air, so it's great. I think I, I enjoy my time with them so much that it's like the best day of my week actually and it gets me through the week that I know Thursday nights is my fun night that I can enjoy some of my friends here on campus. I don't really know what I'm going to do next year because there's not going to be people to laugh with like there is this year. It was hard at first coming in as a freshman, um, not really knowing anything about um, doing a live studio show like that. I learned a lot um, and the, their senior experience um, definitely helped me. Jenna uh, is a character, let me tell you. She is one of the funniest girls I've ever met. Uh, growing up with Jenna at camp was always fun and then every time I see her, she's got a comment to make about that. Uh, her and I had Passover Seder, we were both Jewish, and we had that last year at my place and she brought all of her roommates and girlfriends and it was a riot. It was a lot of fun last year. Jenna, whenever we need her, she is more than willing to come down and help out with whatever we have her doing. Um, and we know we can always count on Jenna if you need her for something. She knows how to work all the equipment, probably better than I do. She comes in and she doesn't care what position you put her at, she's like the perfect utility player, you can put her at any position she's the best at it. She always tells me, stop saying thank you to her, but I can't thank her enough. Maya is such a hardworking person. Being the director of Sports Zone, she really makes sure that every little fine detail is perfect. 
she does an amazing job keeping everyone on task and making the show what it is. And you know, she comes up with so many different ideas for what she wants. When she has that image in her head of what she wants, she, she's very um, steadfast in, in her approach to that. You know, when she wants this to be done, then that's how she wants you to do it. Why is the best director I could have asked for? She works on graphics while I'm working on lighting. It's the perfect combination. It's a one-two punch. She's the most hard-working person, and it's a, it's a director's job that once the show goes live, producer's not in charge anymore. It's all the director. And I couldn't ask for a better person to be in charge of the live show. Oh man, Ben Mitchell, what a character. That guy is one of the smoothest guys whenever you get caught on air and have nothing to talk about. The guy can just read off stuff and he's very, very fun to work with. We played football on the weekends and I just blew him up and got the pick. <laughs> and that's all, that, that's all that you need to know. Everyone who sits next to him or stands next to him technically while on air, they just say he's the person I want to be next to all the time. He just he knows how to work off of other people perfectly, and he's just the, one of our best personalities for OSD. I think that this year was the first time I actually anchored with Utano um, alone, like me and him alone. And, you know, it went a lot smoother than I thought it would. Um, uh, it was actually probably one of my better anchoring times. I don't know anything about hockey, so him helping me out with hockey and doing blocks together and just I would ask him questions and he could go for two minutes because he knew a lot about him. Alex Utano worked for the Southern Ohio Copperheads with me and we had a blast talking late night sports on the road trips, whether they'd be in some sketchy hotel, but it's great watching hockey games with him over the summer. Kosis can extend the show better than anybody else. Called me freshman a lot, which I kind of just accepted, which was kind of cool. I think I was called that in high school by the seniors also, so that was pretty cool. There was one block last week we went low the first two by like three minutes, and John was coming on. We're like, we're not even worried because he's coming up, so it's always nice to know that he can bail out when we're short on time. The past couple shows I was on with John, and John is a wealth of information. This past summer, him and I bonded very much over the Southern Ohio Copperheads and we had a great time broadcasting that on the radio airwaves. If we were retiring numbers here at Ohio Sports Zone, these would be five numbers that no one could wear again because they're all retired, they're all fantastic players in our team that is Ohio Sports Zone. Uh, I wish them good luck. They're not going to need it with the skill they have, uh, the, the attitude they put on, the hard work. It's just fantastic and they're gonna they're gonna have a bright future in this industry and I hope they remember what it is. How could anybody forget Ohio Sports Zone? I want to thank Zach Farbman for putting that together. I want to thank Mariah Lung, the director, Blake, who will be directing next year, and all the rest. Mateen, next year's producer for Alex Utano and Ben Mitchell. I know it's been a ride for myself over these past four years. There's not much more I would have rather done than come to Studio C on Thursdays. I'm John Kosis. Good night, everybody.